In this video, I'm going to be going over question five from the Compound Data 2 workshop. So in this question, we're having a look at what happens when you pass arrays into functions. Um, and I'm going to trace that using a memory diagram that I have here over on the left. So I already have my data array set up. So I've already done this line here where I have a float array called data with these values. Um, there are seven items here, so the array is of length seven. <clears throat> and then here I have an integer array called info, which is equal to the return value or the output um, of this function when you pass in this array as its parameter. So we're going to get a return value uh, from this function, and that's what this integer array info is going to be referencing. Um, so first we need to jump into the scope of this function. So we have our array data, which is being passed in as our parameter, uh, and the formal parameter, the name of that, is called r. And because um, this is the equivalent of, equivalent of saying Float, oh, that's a bit big. There we go. It's the equivalent of saying float array r is equal to data, which we know is a shallow copy. We're saying that the float array r um, is a reference to a place in memory, um, and data is also a reference to a place in memory. It's just a reference there, it's not the actual array. So what's happening here is, make this a little bit smaller, is we now have two references to the same place in memory. Oh, sorry. Ah, um, there's another reference to that array. When we are in the scope of that function, once we leave the scope of the function, any, well, we know this from when we did um, function scope, any variables that are created within a scope only exists within that scope. So once we leave that function, um, R will disappear. But anyway, let's have a look at what this function returns. So the first line here says that we have an integer array called result, which is a new integer array, so a new place in memory, um, and its length is R.length, and R is pointing to the same array as data, um, so its length will be 7. So I've got result, which is pointing to this array here, and it has seven places. And these will all be integers. Um, next in our function, we have a loop, and it's that loop that we've seen many times before already. Um, that we know goes through each item in an array, where i is representing the index of each item in an array. Um, so if we start at i is equal to zero, we're saying result zero is equal to, we've got an int casting here, array zero. So result zero is equal to array zero. So if we have a look at just that part, we've got result zero, which is here. We've got r zero, which is here. So we're taking that value and we're putting it into our result array, but first we need to cast it as an int. So this casting is um, treating that float as an integer, so it will round down. So instead of 2.5 being copied over, we've got the value 2. Next we know in our loop we've got i++, so now i is equal to 1. So we've got result 1, which is this space here, is equal to, we have that int casting, um, array one, which is this one here. So again, the same thing, we know we're going to be copying over that value, but uh, that value, that float value, will be cast down um, as an int. So that will be rounding down. So what we're really passing is a negative five. So we don't have to trace this loop so carefully because we know exactly what it's doing. It's the same loop we've seen many, many times now. Um, so what we can do is just one by one going through each of the indexes in our array, copy over each value, um, but copy over the int value of that. So result 2 is equal to r2, result 3 is equal to r3, 
Result 4 is equal to R4. Result 5 is equal to R5. And result 6 is equal to R6. And you can't have a negative 0, can you? So it's just 0. Okay, so that's what um, our memory diagram will look like at this point in time once we've finished this loop. So once we've exited this loop, we've got our return statement, which says return result. So it's this reference result, which is being returned back to where the function call was, and the function call was here. Um, so if result is being returned here, so that is the equivalent of saying int array info is equal to result. And because both info and result are integer arrays, we know that that means a shallow copy, not a deep copy. So what's happening here is we now have a reference to that same place in memory here, but its name is info. And at this point, once we've returned, that means that we're returning back to the function call, which is set up, and that also means we're leaving the function. So any uh, arrays variables that have been declared inside the scope of this function we now no longer have access to. So that means that r was declared because it was a formal parameter so we don't have that reference anymore um, and we also don't have the reference to result because that was declared and created and had values assigned to it inside of the of the function um, but that just means that we've lost the reference result. The array still exists, that's a different place in memory. Um, it's just result that's disappeared. And I'll remove that because that was just making a point. So once all of this code has been executed, this is what your memory diagram should look like. We have no traces of what was um, done in the function. All we have is two arrays, a float array called data, an integer array called info. Data has a bunch of float values and info has those same values but rounded down to the closest, or well not to the closest integer, rounded down um, to this int value here. Uh, so that is what uh, the memory diagram for question 5 will look like.